don't go chasing waterfalls Cause if you do, she gon' set you up and rob ya Don't go chasing these dumb hoes Cause if you do, you gon' end up broken by me Oh no, great, but let's go ahead and get straight into the video, man You know what I'm saying? We got Q50 with the little 50 R.I.P. the little bro I don't know what the hell happened I'm honestly been out of the loop with all the new Chicago booth All, all the Chicago booth, all the new Chicago beef, all the new Chicago stuff that's going on I don't know what's going on no more, bro I do know I heard a little song that he had, you know what I'm saying? Man, on Funnel Grade, that shit hard as hell. So I'm, I, I think I owe it to him to react to see what the story was. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you see me looking down, just know I'm looking down because I'm rolling up. Nowadays, there's just something spooky about large platforms giving podcast interviews to certified full time crash outs because truly, you never know if it's going to be their last interview. People are crashing out so bad, these rappers are dropping interviews and getting caught lacking in no less than two business days. First, it was YBC Duel after his Brandon Buckingham interview getting caught 24 hours later. Now, we're getting word that Q50 with Lil 50, a rising rapper out of the south side of Chicago, has reported reportedly got a merc and an ambush style setup he and that's honestly because i ain't mean to cut him off but that's honestly because y'all be coming on these damn interviews over bapping like it's okay to come on here and say some regular shit but y'all be coming on here trying to make the whole interview about dissing niggas and saying the ops some hoes and they ain't never did none and i just smoked your dead homie last week you ain't get back and it's like, especially with YBC Duel, he went to his op block, stood on their block, and was like, yeah, them niggas be all the way down there. We ran them off their block. I popped folks right here. That nigga is an op in that car. He drove fast. He ain't going to do nothing. You making them seem like some hoes. So it used to be a difference back in the day. Like, you made a nigga seem like a hoe in real life. Nobody knew but the niggas that was there. So, like, you know what I'm saying? Word might have got around, but nobody really cared. If you moved, no one's new. If you moved to the suburbs, no one knew. But nowadays, you got niggas like, if I embarrass you on this interview, bro, people in California know you a hoe. People in LA, I mean, people in goddamn Las Vegas know you a hoe. People in the UK know you a hoe. People in Australia know you a hoe. So niggas be feeling like they got to defend their honor, and it kind of get like that. Recently had a DJU interview that released just 48 hours ago. And before that, DJU had previously interviewed Bloodhound Lil Jeff and Lil Scoom, who passed away shortly after their interviews. Bro had three people getting murked after their interviews in the last six months. It's so bad that after the last Q50 with Lil 50 interview, people are saying that DJU's platform is cursed. You know, like Couch is cursed, or it's his fault that these people are dying. Well, from the outside looking in, it could seem that way with the amount of dissing and gangbang that goes on in that channel many right. of these people had real ties to the streets that would have probably either led them to jail or an early grave which he right. makes sure to say every single time and according to what i see online y'all living a street life okay and y'all know i'm sure y'all know about now the two things that come with the street life right if you a lot of young guys and um We've had several guys that, you know, left us this year. You feel me? This was a rough year for us, you know? Unfortunately for Lil 50, the grave caught up to him before the rap lifestyle ever did. And the beef that caused it was completely insane. From his sister calling out the person behind it and putting a 20K bounty on his head. That's 20K on somebody here. I get y'all last 24 hours. I bet y'all whoever did whatever be killed. I'm, I'm done talking now. Y'all gotta stop doing this shit as females. Shut the fuck. Shut up. Shut up. Y'all be trying to come on here like, first y'all don't be with it, then y'all brother die, then y'all come on here and say all this extra shit. So if you say you putting 20k on somebody's head, you don't think them niggas finna come for you now? At the end of the day, you're a woman, bro. You are a lady, you are a female, you are a woman. What the hell is you finna do? You ain't finna get out of these trenches, you ain't finna blow your pipe, you ain't finna do none of that. The last woman killer that I heard about was K.I. And there's a lot of goddamn conflicting stories we hear about K.I. So I'm just saying, that was years ago, like, 15 years ago damn near cut it out stop you talking about you gonna put 20k on somebody's head we use that to move your dumb ass out the trenches move your family out the trenches what's wrong with y'all his own blood cousin trolling his death there's too much to unpack right now but we got to get into this beef that took out a growing talent in the chicago scene right now but before we do again i'm gonna need you to do something for me like comment subscribe like, comment, go subscribe, the road to 100k heard. subs make sure you hit that link in the description at staysafeworld.com tap into the merch make sure you hit that damn notification bell so whenever i post y'all the first ones to see it man you already know tune in let's get into this right now let's go.
I know if you're a fan of drill music, you probably accidentally came across Q50 when searching through YouTube, you know, looking for Bloodhound Q50 videos. That's exactly how I found Dude, along with another rapper from his area named Fully Chopped times two. But they honestly have been running up a lot of views in a short period of time. You know those YN memes that have been going around talking about POV, a YN pulls up on you with a switch. Yeah, this is the real life version of that. These YNs are crazy and they're mad young. And it seems that people have been accusing them of trying to cosplay as bloodhound little jeff and bloodhound q50 for the longest if those are who you look up to you know off a of river your life is ultimately cooked however they didn't just need the influence of the bloodhounds to get this level of crash dummy in them it was something that had been passed down but one legendary crash out that you probably heard of little 50 is a member of the notorious gang of black p stones from the west inglewood area called pgf for psycho mm. gang forever named after their beloved member psycho that was killed in 2017 their biggest member was rapper pgf nuke who was making ways in the city a couple mm. years back and even had a song with polo g amongst a bunch of other rappers but unfortunately he never got a haircut and somehow got multiple carjack charges so bro has been locked up for a minute now he had a whole yeah, record deal up. and songs with huge rappers but somehow got trapped in the hood again doing crash out shit. bro had a whole deal and was doing carjack after carjack but i wonder why he was doing those carjack not gonna stay on here off rip though if that's what's going down with the older generation i can only imagine that the younger generations of shooters like little 50 and yeah. his close friend fully chopped times two are completely fried little 50 was originally from the 69 and polina area he said he was a jit and was bad as back in the day and would go around stealing from the neighborhood stealing bikes eventually turned into bigger crimes and he eventually jumped off the porch having close ties to members over in the 59th and polina area where pgf is from he was pretty much raised by his sister who was only a couple years older than him due to a fa crazy family situation where his mother kicked them both out of the house off rip these are pretty terrible circumstances so his life eventually became a race to the crash out fully chopped in him had extensive beef with multiple people online and in real life and were completely federal self snitching about all of it this activity mm. gained them a lot of enemies but it also got I'll them be honest though if your mama really kicked you out the crib and that's just how that shit went down and that's why you in the street life so much it's hard bro when you're a young kid and you're not even old enough to get a job but even if you can get a job y'all gotta look at it like this if i already live in the trenches even if I personally don't got ops, I live in this neighborhood. So everybody that live over here got beef with that neighborhood. That neighborhood know I've been over here because we all went to school together. Everybody know everybody. So it's like, if I go get this job at Walmart, Walgreens, McDonald's, they gonna know where I work at and they eventually gonna pop out and come smoke my ass. Even if they don't smoke me, they finna beat the hell out of me. Nobody really wants that. So it's like, okay, can't go that route. Can't go that damn school route because I'm still broke as hell. Even if I go to school, these niggas know where I go to school at and they're going to come outside and try to smoke me or beat me or rob me consistently. So I'm eventually have to get in the street. So it's like a lot of people don't be having a choice but to go ahead and get in the street life and that shit just be crazy as hell. And I'd be feeling bad, genuinely. I'd be feeling real bad because I feel like a lot of people just feel trapped in this lifestyle when they don't got to. Like, there's so much you can do, but a lot of people don't got the access to do shit that they want to do, you know, to change their life a lot of fans and people tuning into their music but ultimately that's the same type of stuff that will kill you so we got to get into how everything went down right now in chapter two with the beef that caused all this Beef term for I don't know if these dudes were trying to be Bloodhound Lil Jeff or King Von, but the type of shit they would put into detail in the internet was insane. There were so many people that were trying to end these dudes just based off the controversy that they were getting into that it could have been anyone. Imagine beefing with your own blood cousin to the point where your cousin is straight dissing you after you get killed. This is apparently what happened to Lil Fifth after his supposed cousin Lil Speedy came out and dissed him after he died. Apparently, their relationship was strained after Lil Fifty stole Lil Speedy's pipe, and apparently Lil yeah. Speedy is tied in with drill city on something like that or the younger members of that on top of this fully chopped even pretty much admitting that shooting little speedy's house a couple months ago. bruh these dudes be really that's moving like though. they don't enjoy their freedom that's so how i be though i ain't gonna lie like damn near every beef in chicago started over a stolen pipe i swear to god bro like a lot of shit started over like niggas getting their ass beating school and not just liking each other you took his girl shit like that but a lot of beefs too started off niggas just getting their pipes took I'm talking about took in the worst way. You feel what I'm saying? So that just how shit go. And then you shot up folks' crib. I diss your ass too. You shot up my we cousins and you shot up my crib, gang? That's bogus.
So it's not surprising when crazy shit happens. So I'm never gonna head. get over what? that. Well, that seems like an altercation that was already crazy. There's an even darker beef that apparently claimed the lives of several other people that many people point out could have had something to do with the death of Lil 50. One of the most aggressive beefs that spread its way online is a crash out internet beef that PGF had with another set in the south side area called 147. 147 is a group mm. emerging out of the back of the yards neighborhood of the south side. They have a buzzing rapper named Glock boy Bobo who was starting to recently make waves until he was arrested for several armed robberies. I mean Dang. pretty much in all his music talks about armed robberies to the fullest so I guess it makes sense that bro got arrested for multiple armed robberies but he pretty much got cooked. While he's on the older side like 27 28 it seems that the younger members of 147 have been caught in a brutal war with the younger members of PGF that resulted in someone close to Black Boy Bobo getting killed. You see Black Boy Bobo had a close friend named Murdoch who allegedly had 10 bodies on some Ted Bundy type shit. Murdoch was killed in a revenge shooting back in 2022 when he was out walking his dog. However, his younger brother Baby Drake aka Baby Doc had close ties to the gang and 147 in general. However, things went too far one day a couple months ago and the relationship between these two gangs would forever get even worse. It's not really sure what caused the beef with PGF but it seems like due to the close proximity of these gangs they've been beefing for a number of years over territory and get backs and all type of things that big gangs could just be having problems with. Black Boy Bobo, like I said before, was arrested on an armed robbery just a couple days before a tragedy would strike on the brother of his best friend. Due to the fact they never released the names of the victims because they were so young, it's hard to tell if this scene is the one where Baby Doc died, but it seems like it could be when you line up the timing. 15 year old boy is critically hurt in a shooting in West Inglewood. Chicago police said a teen was standing on the sidewalk near 57th and Walcott right by Henderson Elementary School. Yeah. Police say a car pulled up, one person got out, and started shooting It'd be like that on september 22nd 2024 a 15 year old boy aka baby doc was posted on the 5700 block of south walcott avenue he was standing near a sidewalk at the location when an unknown vehicle pulled up and at least one person from the inside got out and began shooting at him police said they hit him multiple times in the legs but the car was able to get away when the police arrived it was too late and he bled out from his injuries not too long after this members of pgf took to social media and have been dissing this guy doc repeatedly fully chopped posted switches and guns pretty much saying that he had something to do with it you know making everyone's job easier just because these dudes claim it though doesn't mean that they actually could have been because obviously there's so many gangs in chicago it could have been anyone but he was hardcore saying it that they had something to do with it while the pgf shorties were making sure to go crazy online and claim this shooting an ominous interview was set the scene for an eventual get back just a month later that we'll get into right now in the final chapter the cursed couch Honestly, bro, DJ U got a crazy record. Three people getting killed after his interviews with him in six months. Now, is that because he's setting them up to die with his platform? Or is that because they were already crash outs and he was trying to monetize that? You know, now, he's not setting nobody up to die on their platform, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, he just asked all the regular questions all these other interviewers ask. These things have coming on there over whooping. Now, do he let them over whoop? Yeah, but that's just... I can't really like you know what I'm saying. Niggas gonna if they don't go on my platform and overwoop, they don't go on another nigga platform and overwoop. He always still be trying to have a a good message behind it, so it ain't his fault. It's just how shit be going down. I like shit be going down. I'm crazy, gang. I ain't gonna lie to you. So it's like you know, it's he ain't trying to put him in that position. But if you come on here and you diss everybody in Chicago, I mean you know at the end of the day it's kind of hard to tell it's a very nuanced argument honestly DJU two days ago posted an interview with fully chopped times two and little 50 and people were not cool with it in the interview bro literally says like yo shouldn't y'all be in school but he continues interviewing them honestly kind of crazy but i guess it's better he's giving them a platform instead of having them do crash out shit to get noticed he tried to give a long-winded preachy moment saying you're either gonna die or go to jail if you stay in the streets and they totally didn't even listen bro they were on their phones real why in activity one one thing I did notice though is they all took the time that they could to diss every op that they had. They even ended the interview on that note basically saying the ops. Lil 50 was saying he sweeps the streets and takes out the trash, pretty much implying that they're really about it. It's crazy though, but people are going to be forever saying that he got killed from this interview just because of the blatant disrespect. At the end of the interview, it made sure to say stay safe. You know, DJU had to give him a little warning, but just 48 hours later, DJU would be posting a condolence message because a crazily eerie shooting would take out Lil 50 just yesterday. Oh boy, we're shot this is crazy. In Courtney is live at Coma Children's Hospital with what we've learned. Courtney? 
Yeah, good morning to you both. That boy was rushed here last night to the hospital after he was wounded in that shooting, but he did not survive. You can hear police dispatch audio right there revealing officers were met with a large crowd when they arrived on scene last night. According to police, the shooting happened just before 8.30 in the city's Woodland. Apparently sometime between the interview and now, he would get into it with his cousin Lil Speedy. Many people believe that he dropped his pin to confront his cousin, but somehow, some way, the ops found his location. They think that he could have given it to them. At around 8.24 p.m. on October 22nd, shots would ring out in a dark alley in the 6600 block of South Chaplin Avenue and the West Woodland neighborhood. Lil 50 was discovered by witnesses laying in the alley after the shots. They called the police and attempted to revive him but unfortunately shortly after he succumbed to his injuries and had multiple gunshot wounds. Lil Speedy would pretty much troll like crazy on his story and pretty much just have his sister looking crazy which led to that video that I showed you before where his sister said that we put in 20, 30k on these people's heads. 20k on the person who did this and 30k on Speedy. And this is just going to continue the vicious cycle that we already know in Chicago. There's so yeah, that's, that's, that's that, yeah, when Dirk met F my cousin, and Lil Osama said F my cousin. This is real shit. Like people got op cousins, bro. This is normal, especially in Chicago. Like my whole family, my whole mama side of family is in Chicago. My whole daddy side of family is in the suburb of Chicago. Like no bad. Like this is just what's going on. Except for a couple people that be you know live here, live there, but it's be like that. You might have a cousin on the other side. Like I'm lucky, all my cousins are for real as girls. So they wasn't you know. I'm cool with that, but. Nigga, it, it was going down, man. Niggas don't even know it was going down over there. Pray for his family. And pray for him. Pray for everybody involved in the city right now because it's getting crazy. But you got to be careful out there, bro. Do something different with your life. I know people ain't probably going to listen to it, but do something different with your life. Crash out. Don't be on these interviews. Just use these interviews to promote yourself. Talk about yourself. Like, even though Vert was on that interview high as hell, on No Jumper, he was high as hell. On Fun on Grail. I wish he wasn't that high. He might not have been that high. Maybe he just chilling. I don't know. I ain't trying to. You feel me? But that's how you're supposed to talk about that shit. He was avoiding all dumbass questions. That's how you gotta be. You can't feed into it. You can't do it.